Well, good Sunday morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. Got a pretty sunny day out there. And uh, it's good morning here to be in the Lord's house to worship Him. If you would stand with me, take your songbook there in front of you. Song number 50. Song number 50. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Let's sing this morning and uh, lift our hearts and our minds to the Lord and praise to Him this morning. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, O oh, earth, His wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms, he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, Jesus' excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. He our rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hail Him, hail Him, Jesus the crucified. Sound His praises. Jesus, who bore our sorrows, love unbounded, wonderful, deep, and strong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reigneth forever and ever. Him crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Amen. It's a privilege to praise Him. Amen. Song number 380. Song number 380. Revive us again. We praise Thee, O God. Starts off there in the first verse. Join me there all together. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Revive us again. spirit of light who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love, may each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. Amen. 
let's ask the Lord's blessing on the service this morning. I'd like to ask Brother Marvin Carson, if you would, uh, ask God's blessing. Yes. Yes. Amen. You may be seated, Brother Brian. Well, I'm glad to see everybody here on uh, this beautiful Sunday morning. And uh, what a blessing it is to be in the Lord's house once again uh, today. I want to welcome everyone here today. And if you're here for the very first time and uh, have not already received uh, an information brochure uh, about the church, we'd like to give that to you. It also has uh, a guest card in there if you wouldn't mind just filling that out and, and giving it back to us uh, before, we, uh, before you leave. I appreciate that as well. So if you uh, have not received that yet and you're a first-time visitor, would you raise your hand so we can give that to you? Anyone like that? All right. Got some guys here and some girls there. All right. Anyone else? Okay, I don't see any other hands. Well, this is Promotion Sunday, and uh, that means that uh, in the uh, school grades, then they uh, promote uh, going into the next grade uh, level. Now, after you get to the adults, <clears throat> we don't really do much promotion. Uh, I heard one person say that uh, the next promotion they were going to have was, <laughs> yeah, up. Uh, and so uh, we're, not, we're not looking uh, to promote anybody that way during the service, so I uh, appreciate you staying here if that would be the case. Thank you, gentlemen, that, that's got it there. And so I uh, don't want to uh, necessarily promote that way this morning, uh, but we are looking forward to that day when uh, we can... Uh, all be promoted and the Lord comes back and takes us to be with him looking forward to that day uh, for sure but it is good to have some uh, some that have joined the youth department uh, today and they're here for the first time and uh, that is a blessing uh, today as well thank the Lord for our wonderful Bible school week we had a great time these these uh, front, I don't know, 10 or 11 pews on both sides were uh, just filled with uh, a bunch of uh, uh, children through the week and singing. And uh, Brother Decker would bring uh, a lesson twice a night, once to the first through third graders and then the next, the fourth through sixth. And, and uh, the Lord truly... Uh, <clears throat> the Lord truly blessed... In uh, six children trusting Christ as their Savior this week. And what a blessing. That's what we've been praying for, isn't it? Amen. That uh, the Lord would uh, touch some hearts and allow them to see their need of salvation. And uh, we did not uh, pressure any children into, you've got to accept the Lord because we don't do that. Uh, we want the Lord to be the one that does the working uh, on the heart. And uh, we thank the Lord for his blessings. And just for the safety, the safety that he gave in uh, all the traveling uh, this week and uh, even here on the facilities, the uh, Lord provided safety as well. And we, uh, we give him the praise for that. And uh, if you were wanting rain during the day uh, this past week and you didn't get it, you can blame a whole bunch of us because we prayed that there wouldn't be any rain. And uh, the Lord uh, blessed that. And he answered. Now, we have, we have had Bible school in the rain before. We've had it in some, some thunderstorms before. But uh, it's all in the Lord's will. And this week, uh, we prayed and asked him to hold off the rain. 
Now, I don't know if you watched the radar like I did and, and the weather this, uh, this week, but uh, just about every day there would be a, a front coming up towards Bowling Green and uh, uh, along the way the Lord would break it up and it would go north and south and east and west and, and keep us dry. And so for that, I'm very thankful. Uh, it's easier to do it, uh, to pick up children and take them home uh, and have activities outside. It's easier to do when it's not raining <laughs> and not mud puddles everywhere. And so I uh, just want to thank the Lord uh, this morning for, for uh, holding that back. <clears throat> Even in the bulletin article this morning mentioned the fact that uh, it takes all of us. Some people were able to be here uh, their schedules allowed for it, and some uh, did not. But that's okay, because if you were praying for it, you were involved, uh, because you were a prayer warrior, and we're thankful for that. I believe in uh, Brother, uh, Brother Joe's article in the bulletin, uh, he mentioned 150 for the average uh, number at, at Bible school this week. And I, I tell you, <clears throat> I was pleasantly surprised because we didn't know. We didn't know what it would be like. It's been two years since we had Bible school. And so what a pleasant surprise and answer to prayer and blessing uh, we received this week. So thank you very much for being part of uh, praying for, uh, for the uh, uh, Bible school this week. <clears throat> well, that makes us look ahead. We've got, uh, we've got some things uh, ahead of us. Uh, even this month, you can uh, read here in the bulletin and see that uh, the last Sunday night of the month, I'm going to have a family fellowship time and I'm uh, going to cook out some hot dogs and different things like that and, <clears throat> uh, and uh, have you all bring some sides and we'll have a fellowship time after service uh, that uh, last Sunday night. Uh, of this month, and uh, go ahead and be praying for junior camp and senior camp next month. Uh, go ahead, and, and uh, if you haven't uh, been praying already, then go ahead and, and make today your first day. Be in prayer for, uh, for all the campers that will be going uh, to that, uh, those activities this, uh, uh, this upcoming month, so be in prayer for those. Uh, if you will. <clears throat> a couple of uh, announcements uh, with thinking about uh, the, uh, the future. Uh, all the ladies that are planning on going to the, uh, to the ladies meeting, the ladies retreat uh, in August, if, uh, if you could, uh, and uh, we're, we're needing to get the balance due for, uh, for that uh, retreat, uh, so that we can get that taken care of. Uh, and we need that by next Sunday, Shannon? Okay, next Sunday, uh, if you will, and get the balance on that. Also, ladies that are in the Titus 2 uh, singing group tonight, uh, this evening, just right after the evening service, uh, we'll have a, a practice for the, uh, the Titus 2 ladies group uh, tonight. So just wanted to give you a heads up there. Let's take our bulletins and look at our memory verse for this week. Here in 2 Timothy 3.15, and uh, still thinking about the, uh, the working of the Lord in the hearts of children. So let's say it through uh, twice this morning together. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 3.15, and that from a child... Thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 3.15. 2 Timothy 3.15. And that thou from a child thou hast... Well, it helps if I read it instead of doing what I was doing. Let's try, let's try it again. Here we go, from the beginning. 2 Timothy 3, 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. 
2 Timothy 3, 15. Uh, that worked much better. <laughs> All right. Let's have a word of prayer and ask uh, the Lord's blessings on the offering as it's received uh, today. And as we pray and ask God's blessings in that way, Brother Mike Parton, would you pray for us, please? Yes, Lord, thank you. Yes. Yes. Amen. If you would join me in standing once again, song number 317 now. Song 317, Victory in Jesus. Let's sing out there on the first. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How He gave His life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Just came through a week full of victories. 
uh, no telling uh, this side of heaven how many victories uh, were there. And, uh, you know, Satan didn't want any of that to take place. But the Lord has the victory over him. Amen. I'm thankful for that. And to that we say, to God be the glory. So if you would join me in singing, just even as we think about last week, and give him the glory for great things he has done. So song number three, uh, song number 19, sorry, song number 19. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that Yielded his life and atoned man for sin and opened Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory, great things He had done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God. Defender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give Him the glory great things He had done great things He had taught us great things He had done and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son but purer and higher and greater will be wonder our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come, Father, through Jesus the Son. And give him the glory, great things he had done. Amen. If you would be seated now, uh, Miss Shanna and Miss Katie are coming with a special this morning. <laughs> There was none to help me Once I was on my own Scared as I faced the future Scared as I faced it alone Reaching out for someone Who would take the time to care Then you came
For the song, appreciate that you you all have some folks that come to your mind that God placed in your life just at the right time, came along and showed you the love of God, the love of Christ uh, to you, and introduced you to the greatest love you could ever find, and that is the love of the love of God, and just demonstrated by the love of our Savior on the cross. And so, so thankful for those individuals that uh, come along in your life and, uh, and tell you about the love of God and shows you the love of God uh, as well. So appreciate the song this morning. Exodus chapter number 20 this morning. Exodus chapter number 20. As we are looking at the uh, Ten Commandments <clears throat> that God has, uh, has given Moses, and we look this, uh, this morning at uh, a very important command, and, and it's one that actually uh, teaches us or shows us and commands us to honor life to honor life, because life is a gift from God. Amen. It is. Uh, life is a gift from God, and we must, uh, we must recognize that uh, in our life and, uh, and honor life as God uh, honors it uh, as well. If you found your place, let's stand together, if you will, as we look in Exodus chapter number 20. <clears throat> Begin in verse number one, it says, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt uh, not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Heavenly Father, once again, we come to you this morning and we ask you to please take your word. Use it in our hearts. Lord, help us to hold on to the truths that are in it this morning and that you will 
Lord, take it and, and help us to live our lives accordingly. We thank you and praise you for the privilege of being here today, worshiping you and turning our hearts and mind to you. And I pray that, Lord, you will take the time and may it be fruitful in our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> you know, our society has lost its appreciation of life. It, uh, as, a, as a whole, and I'm not saying everyone uh, by any means or any stretch of the imagination, I'm not saying that everyone in society, because I trust uh, the, everyone here in the auditorium this morning, uh, has not lost your appreciation of life. But in the culture, uh, culture around us and in the society's thinking, the appreciation, the honoring, if you will, the respect for life isn't there the way that it has been in the past. It's, it's just not where it, it should be. And we can see that and see that how it's promoted in, in many uh, ways. And it's promoted, uh, a, a devaluing of life is promoted from an early age. I mean, you look at the, look at the, uh, the video games that are promoted as, as great entertainment for teenagers and those younger than teenagers. And they, they put different uh, uh, warning labels, if you will, uh, grading uh, uh, upon them to say, well, this is for uh, adults or this is for this particular uh, uh, age. This age and older can, can appreciate it and not take it to heart. And I think that we have seen through the years that those, uh, those little labels on, on games just aren't doing the job, are they? They just aren't doing the job. They... The, the appreciation of life and the, or the devaluing of life uh, by way of, of uh, various games and movies and, and videos and that type of, of uh, entertainment uh, puts a, a low value on life. There are, there are people, and I've read the stories of, of uh, teenagers and adults as well, that get so caught up in the world of make-believe and that taking a life is so easily done and you get to have your life again or you get to uh, face the same enemy again on the, on the particular uh, screen. You get to do it again if you just hit reset or you finish that game and you start a new game. Some people get lost in the world of make-believe that they think that's reality. And why? Because it's fed into the mind. To where the, the understanding of once you die, you're dead. Once you take another person's life, they're dead. And that understanding has been lost through the years. Hey, Brother Brian, that, <laughs> you, I think you're missing misunderstanding society. People understand that those are just games. Some people don't. And you know, if you feed yourself something long enough, it becomes a part of you. And that doesn't matter what it is. It can be, uh, it can be anything from, from the, the loss of valuing of life to to uh, anything, whether it be uh, uh, marriage or whether it be family or whether it, whatever it might be, if you if you feed on the the negative principle of God's word, those things that would be in opposition to God's word, if you feed on them long enough, it will become a part of you and the path that God wants you to be on, and the truth and where you are headed are diametrically opposed. Opposite directions. And that's a dangerous place to be. 
individually and as a church or, or as a society as a whole, that's a dangerous place to be when you are going and walking completely the opposite direction of where God wants you to be. That is a serious condition. Serious situation. But when we look at our the verse that we're going to look at this morning there in verse number 13, and we see that it says, Thou shalt not, what? Kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the, uh, the news. <laughs> uh, any of you ever get tired of the news? Yeah. I, uh, I watch it to, uh, to know what's going on. But if you watch it too long, you get frustrated, don't you? And you, you want to turn it off and say, okay, that's enough reality. Let's turn that off. Uh, you, you just get tired of watching it or listening to it. But if you have watched or listened to the news recently, uh, especially I, I heard a couple of different stories even this week about this very thing, that actually, you know, killings are on the rise compared to last year. They've increased. More frequent. Even in places you would not expect. You think, well, that's mainly in the big cities, New York City or Chicago or Indianapolis or L.A. or those kind of places. I can understand, yes, that uh, killings have increased in those areas. I, I would imagine so, but even in other places too. But like Bowling Green. Like other even small towns around this region that you never hear of, of killings or murders. You don't, you don't hear it. It's rare. But they're, they've been increasing. And we're not here for a, a class on civics or anything like that. We're not going to go into to those, well, what do you think might be the reason? And we go into all of that kind of stuff. I, I know the reason. I know the reason is because of yeah, exactly. Because of sinful people living in a sinful world. That's why. And a lot of times it's because I want my way and you're in my way of getting what I want to get. I mean, isn't that usually the way it happens? Now, we, we aren't down to the other commands that we read them today, but Coveting? What's coveting? Well, I'm, I want what somebody else has. And if I want what you have bad enough, then I think it's well within my rights. Not, not, not really and truly, okay? This is just the way some people think. I'm well within my rights to do whatever I have to do to you to get what I want that belongs to you. That sounds similar to the world we live in, right? Sure. You know, if I want it bad enough and you resist me enough, then a lot of people would kill you for it. Brother Brian, thank you for this encouraging message. I could have watched this on channel 13. Do you understand God knew human nature. He's even given these commands to His people, the children of Israel. He's given them to Moses, His chosen leader, that He's brought them up out of Egypt. And He says, all right, now, here we go. These are the boundaries that I want you to live by. And He gives the first four commandments. And, and He gives these boundaries for this relationship that he wants to have with his people, he sets up these boundaries. Thou shalt not have any other God before me. That's the foundational level. No other gods before me. I am your God. I want a relationship with you. He says, don't have any images. Don't, don't, uh, don't uh, take my name in vain and set aside the day of the Sabbath 
and keep it holy so you can turn your attention to me on that day. And he, he sets up those four commands so that he can have the boundaries for his relationship with Israel. He sets that up. And if they will have those four commandments followed like they should, then these next six should be easy. Shouldn't they? You keep God where He's supposed to be, then your other, the other part of your life should flow out of that relationship with God, shouldn't it? Even today, we aren't the children of Israel, but we have the commandments here before us, and if we will keep God where He is supposed to be in our life, and we have the relationship with Him that He commands us to have with Him, and we walk with Him daily, we allow Him to control our lives and direct us and guide us, and we obey His principles. If we will do that, we won't have any trouble with anything else. But you know where we go sideways? Our relationship with God isn't right. And instead of having Him where He needs to be, we, we put our desires or, or we put ourselves, we put ourselves up here. And when we're trying to please ourselves, opposed to a, uh, uh, of pleasing God, we're about to get into big trouble. And that's what happens. <clears throat> he has them the first four commandments here to honor God. And then he, we mentioned and we preached on even two weeks ago, honoring our father and our mother like we should and having that relationship right. And now he has said and told us in verse number 13, thou shalt not kill. The, it takes us four words here in the English to, to say this. And in the, in the Hebrew, it's two words, but it boils down to this. Never murder. That seems pretty easy to understand, doesn't it? Never murder is what uh, he is saying when we see thou shalt not kill or thou shalt not murder. Do not take the life of another individual uh, uh, wrongfully and, and an unlawful killing. Do not take their life uh, is what he is saying. And it is a command. It's not a suggestion. It's not saying, well, I'll tell you what, don't, don't kill, don't murder, uh, unless, you know, as we mentioned a while ago, unless they have something you want, and then, I mean, by all means, you're well within your right to go and take it from them if they won't give it to you. No. It's a command. If you, if you wanted to, to do it, you could draw an exclamation point. Do not kill. Never. Never murder is what he's, he's getting across to the, the children of Israel and even to us today. There, there are some will, that say that, well, now see, there you go. Thou shalt not kill. Then that means that... Uh, that all of you hunters out there, you're breaking this commandment. I, 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 some of you chuckled. Some of you are smiling. But I've, have, I've heard people say that. Hunting is wrong. Hunting is wrong? What are you talking about? Well, you know. You read the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Don't take the life of anything. That is not what that verse means. I don't care if you like to hunt or you don't like to hunt. That's not what the word verse means. It is, it is saying that, that uh, one individual is not to unlawfully take the life of another individual and murder them. Well, we understand what murder means. We understand what that is. And it's not rabbit hunting. That doesn't have to do with with uh, that, that verse does not fit that particular uh, aspect. You say, well, Brother Brian, how about capital punishment? Isn't that murder? The, the, the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. And isn't, isn't 
Capital punishment? Killing? Kill in this verse means to murder. And if you look over in Genesis chapter 9, you'll see. You'll see that God established the government and for us to follow the rules of government and he gave, and he gave the institution of, of the government to where in... Gen well, let's just go over there. It's easier for me to read it than probably explain it to you. Genesis chapter 9. Look over there. That we are to... As soon as I get there. God instituted in verse number 5 of Genesis 9. <clears throat> says, and surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast will I require it and at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed for in the image of God made he what? Man. Man. If you look over in the next chapter, Exodus chapter 21, you'll see the same principle instituted there as well. That if an individual took the life of another individual, then God has instituted uh, what we call capital punishment. That those that take the life of another individual by way of murder, then God has established it to where their life is to be taken as well. They are to be uh, 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 taken and they are to be killed as a result, as a, as a uh, payment for the life that they took. God has instructed that. So when we look at uh, thou shalt not kill in verse number uh, uh, 13, it's not talking about hunting and it's not, it's not a verse against capital punishment because God has in, in, instituted that by way of setting up uh, the government as a way of keeping order in society. Have you ever noticed that when, when an institution, whether it be a government or whether it be a school or whether it be family, whenever you take discipline away for, from that institution or that, that uh, uh, society, when you take discipline away, do things tend to get better? No. People do what they want with no repercussions. And really and truly, this is what's happening today. There's, there's no discipline. There's no payment for those who take the life of another by way of murder. You can look around. They're taken to jail. They're booked or whatever. And in and, and, and not too long of a time, they're released. And there's no, there's no payment for what they've done. When your children were growing up, if you let them run and do whatever they so chose, and you had no guidelines or boundaries for them to live within, what was the result? Chaos. Pandemonium. Hey, ah, we can go crazy and there's no, there's no repercussions. We can do whatever we want to. That sounds fun for the kids for a while, doesn't it? No rules? Woohoo, I can do whatever I want. That sounds like fun. Well, really and truly, it's, it's not going to end well. Not going to end well. Because left, left to our own devices as human beings, we don't get better. We degrade. Why? Because we're controlled by our sin nature. 
when we don't follow the guidelines, the commands, the principles of God's Word in our life, what do we resort to? The old flesh. Following what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, for whatever I want to do, for as how, however long I want to. When we follow that kind of guideline, we're in for destruction. And we've got our foot on the pedal and headed right for the wall. Same thing in society. God said there is, there is repercussions. There's judgment for the murder of someone. And he has set it up in Genesis. He, he re-emphasizes it in the next chapter that if you take the life by way of murder of, of someone else, if you do that, then what you, will, what you should receive as payment for that is to take your life. I don't know how many people in Kentucky we have on death row, and I didn't get to ask Brother Lamar to check on it. He deals with uh, uh, the prison system, and I, so I didn't get to ask you, but uh, in Kentucky, I don't know how many people we have on death row. You know what, what our society wants to do or has done in some cases? Take away the death penalty. It's inhumane. It's cruel. We shouldn't do that. Well, let me ask you this. What was the murderer thinking when he performed the act of murder? Was he showing any sympathy or care for the individual that he took their life? Or she took their life? No. God has a command for the way that thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. When this command is broken, God has a way of remedying it, this. And he set up capital punishment. So capital punishment does not fit into uh, this, this uh, thou shalt not kill or thou shalt not murder. It's not there. But you know, in our country as well, We as a society murder close to a million every year. We do. Said, Brother Brian, I don't take play I don't take part in, in any murder. I don't I don't do that. The society you live in does. Every day. By way of abortion. If you think about that process, what an inhumane process to take the life An innocent little baby. I think our society needs to be reminded, thou shalt not kill. Yes, it does. But Brother Brian, but there's there's plenty of reasons of why that the abortions could could take could take place. There's there's many many reasons that would give us. The, the right to do that. Not, not according to the Bible. Not according to God's Word. Brother Brian, what about those individuals that for whatever reason they become pregnant by no choice of their own and they are either are raped or there's uh, incest or whatever the problem and the, the issue might be and by, by no, no desire of their own are they with child, are they pregnant? It's, it's not their choice. And they, they shouldn't be loaded down with this burden for nine months to be reminded every day of, of the, the, uh, the reality of their pregnancy. And, and they are 
are living with that every day in the fact that, that they have, uh, uh, or they're with child because of an, uh, an act. Maybe they were drugged or maybe whatever it might be that they are carrying this child. Now they should not, they should not have to live with that. Those, those still aren't reasons to take that baby's life. Brother Brian, you're a heartless. Brother Brian, you don't care about that lady. You don't care about that little teenage girl that has become pregnant and not by her choice. You don't care about them. Yeah, I do too. My heart goes out to them. But it doesn't make it right to take the life of a little baby that had no choice. The baby didn't choose its conception. Sometimes the sins of others we have to live with. Is it fun? No. Does it bring joy to the heart? But can God get you through it? Yes. Yes. Does God put some others to come around you and help you and support you during that time? Yes, He can. Yes. Just like in other valleys in our life. God helps us through. God sends others to come along beside us and to encourage us and to help us through those, those times. And God can help even in times like that. But those examples and situations that might come up in the life of a, of a lady do not give the right to take the life of an unborn child. He doesn't. Why? Because we read there in Genesis that verse number 6, chapter 9, because we are in the image of God. A few weeks ago in, in our Wednesday night in series, and we were we were looking at and, and preaching upon others for Christ, and we looked at the importance of understanding where we all came from, our origin. And that night we mentioned the fact that listen, understanding our origin, where we came from, affects the way we live in other areas. Understanding that we're made in the image of God affects the way we live in other areas. And this is one of them. Appreciating and understanding and respecting life because we're in the image of God made after Him. That our origin is in God Himself. That should affect the way we think and the way we live. But it doesn't just affect the way in which we live and we consider and we look at the, uh, the beginning of life and, and how we're, we're human beings at conception. I said we're human beings at conception. Not a blob of mass not a sale, we're a human being. But you know, at the, at the other end, at the other end of life, we're still human beings. We are. We are. 
this is, this can be a little hard sometimes. When you're standing there beside the bed of a loved one, and they're not going to get any better. Hard to watch them suffer sometimes, isn't it? You know, the same God that is the giver of life at the beginning, He's the same one that's in control of life at the end. And he's been in control the whole time. The life that we live in the beginning, in the middle part, from conception to our death, all of that belongs to God too. I doubt very seriously that there's anyone in here this morning that has, from the time you woke up this morning till right now, you've been thinking, breathe, exhale, beat. Breathe, exhale, beat. I doubt there's anybody in here that's done that. Except maybe teenagers that were goofing off. You say, why would you say the teenager? Because I did it goofing off too. But I doubt you've been doing it for oh, five or six hours. Well, who, who has sustained your life in that time? Not you. God. Why? Because He's the giver of life. And life is a gift. And He's in charge at conception and He's in charge at the end of life. And may I tell you, all of it belongs to Him. And to take someone else's life in that period in murder goes against this command. Thou shalt not kill. So Brother Brian, does, does God forgive murderers? <laughs> he does. Isn't Moses glad of that? You understand. God is telling Moses. He's commanded him. Now I'm going to give you commands. You tell the rest of the children of Israel, thou shalt not kill. What's Moses? He's a murderer. Never murder, Moses. What did he do to that Egyptian? Murdered him. Paul. The great missionary Paul. Wow, we think of him as a, just an unbelievably godly man that preached the gospel to probably thousands upon thousands of, of individuals. People that got saved and, and got into church and started following God and, and uh, even told others about Christ. Paul that taught them how to do that. What was he? Murder. And didn't just murder anybody, he murdered Christians. David. My goodness. We haven't got to that command, but it's the very next one thou shalt not commit adultery. David, busy man. Committed adultery and killed the husband. Murderer. But aren't you thankful? God forgives. Amen. Those murderers on death row around our nation tonight or today, God will forgive them. If they come to Him, and ask for forgiveness and salvation. 
Jesus won't turn them away. He'll forgive. He'll forgive them. That's a loving God, isn't it? The same God that said there's judgment for, for breaking this law, He will forgive and save their soul. What about the ones, Brother Brian, you were talking about abortion. What about those ladies that have had abortions? God forgives. Brother Brian, I know someone that has had multiple abortions. God can forgive that? Yes, He can. He will. Brother Brian, you're talking about taking a life. What about those individuals that take their own life that would commit suicide? If an individual knows the Lord as their Savior, they're a Christian and they take their life by suicide. I, I heard, I only mention this today because I heard it even a couple of days ago in a discussion saying, well, I'll tell you what, that person, they, they committed suicide so they went to hell. They didn't go to hell. They're saved. Well, how is that? They broke this command. They took their own life. I've always heard that if you commit suicide, you will go to hell. Not unless you were unsaved. If a Christian takes their own life, they still go to heaven. So suicide is a sin that... Let me ask you this. When you got saved, did you sin anymore? Anybody? Yeah. All of us. We got saved, we still committed sin. Suicide is a sin because you're taking your life. But it's a sin that has been forgiven. Just like any sin that you have asked forgiveness for as far as when you trusted Christ your Savior, He forgave you for all of your sins. Thou shalt not kill. So what's that mean? It means that we as Christians today should stand, take a stand for the life of the unborn. Yes, the ones that can't, they don't have a voice yet, but they do have a life. That's right. Take a stand for them. And when it comes on time to take a stand publicly, take a stand publicly for the life of the unborn. Thou shalt not kill. What's that mean for us? It means that when we had the opportunity, I, as far as I know, I have, I have never talked to someone that has committed murder. I, I don't, not that I'm aware of. But it should mean that I don't like, I detest the action that they took. But I should still have the heart of God towards them. And witness to them. And tell them of a merciful God. A forgiving God. Who will forgive this act that they have taken and will forgive them of their sins and save them. What does it mean? It means that if I know some young lady or lady of any age that's had an abortion, then it means that I approach them and tell them that there is a God that will forgive Because you know as well as I do, there are many ladies in their older years that regret the day that they took the life of that little baby. 
and they've been living in hurt, pain, and guilt for many years. And they may need you to come beside them and say, you know what? God does forgive. So I don't know who God has in your path. I don't, I don't know your lives personally on a personal level. But God does. And God can take these four words that have such great impact, such great meaning in this command that is given to Moses. He can take those and he can apply that principle to our lives today so that we can be better Christians for him. Let's bow our heads together. There may be some here today that <clears throat> don't know Christ as their Savior. Never started that relationship with God. If that is you today, you've, you've never came to God and asked for forgiveness. You've never trusted by faith Jesus Christ. I encourage you today. Come and allow us to take God's word and show you how you can trust him. He'll save you today. He'll forgive you. There might be someone here today as well that maybe you have knowledge of someone in your life or maybe maybe even you that maybe has had an abortion. It's been bothering you. It's been something that's been weighing on you. This morning, take it to God. He will forgive. However the Lord has dealt with your heart this morning, I would encourage you, follow Him, obey Him. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would Take your word this morning. Lord, I pray that it has already been taken to heart by those in the auditorium, those that were listening by way of radio. I pray that you would help us to be better children of yours by taking the principles that are found here. Lord, we can apply them to our hearts. Maybe we need to have a more tender heart towards those that are dealing with these issues. Maybe we need to be prepared to speak to them and be an encouragement to them. Lord, however you would have us respond, pray that we would be willing to do so. Bless your invitation now. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together, if you will. <clears throat> Brother Andrew leads us in a song of invitation. <clears throat> Let's obey God. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love. At the impulse of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for
for my King, always only for my King. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise, let them flow in ceaseless praise. We didn't, uh, we didn't take the time to look over there in First John, <clears throat> but we're told there that if we were to have hatred in our heart towards a brother, that we've got murder in our heart. That's a whole nother message. We aren't going to go preach a whole nother message, but it's a good thought, isn't it? We may not be guilty of murder physically. But sometimes that hatred in our heart towards another individual. John tells us, if you've got it there, it's like murder. Sometimes that affects us a lot faster than the physical act is to have the same kind of heart towards another individual. I'm going to ask Brother Andrew <clears throat> to lead us in one more stanza. The Lord's dealing with your heart. Don't leave today without answering Him and following Him in the direction He wants you to go. As we sing, Brother Andrew, <clears throat> Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne, it shall be thy That, uh, that stanza of invitation is the key, uh, is your heart the throne of God? And uh, if it is, we're in the right place, if that's the condition of our heart. Well, thank you for being here today. Good to see uh, each and every one of you, and uh, look forward to being back tonight as we continue our, our series through the book of Mark. Uh, Mark chapter 8, so we'll be there this evening unless the Lord changes the path uh, between now and then. So, all right, let's have uh, prayer, and then Brother Andrew is going to uh, bring us a uh, closing chorus uh, this morning. Brother Brian Carpenter, would you pray for us, please? Amen. Quick announcement for those who are in choir. We'll be having choir practice at 530 this evening. Choir practice at 530. Uh, maybe you're not, but uh, a loved one is or a family member is. If you could just pass that on as well to them, that would help out. So 530 choir practice tonight. Let's join together in the chorus, Little as Much When God is in It. Little as much when God is in it labor not for wealth or fame there's a crown and you can win it if you go in Jesus name God bless you you are dismissed be careful going home